What's up you guys? Thanks for tuning in to Trash Panda Garage. Today I'm out here doing a little bit of maintenance work on the truck, specifically trying to fix a dead socket in our Blue Sea accessory uh, panel here. Thought I'd take a break from that and spend a few minutes maybe talking about uh, my observations and how they relate to a decision that you might be trying to make if you have uh, a mid-size pickup truck, and that's whether or not to get a rooftop tent versus maybe a canopy camper. So this video really is aimed at those of you who might be on the fence between ordering a canopy camper and a rooftop tent and rack combo. I was there once myself. Obviously, I went down the rack and rooftop tent road. My perspectives will be based on about 10 months of ownership of a roof nest condor rooftop tent, as well as some of the unanticipated drawbacks that I experienced, even though I felt like I had researched these things pretty well before I ordered it. I don't want this to turn into a review of the Roof Nest Condor clamshell side folding tent. There's a ton of those on YouTube. If you want to see a good one, actually go check out KC250's uh, video review of his Roof Nest Condor Overland, which has an aluminum hard shell. There was an eye-opening moment in his video that caught me by surprise and made me glad that I didn't order the Overland version of the Condor, even though I was very close to pulling the trigger on it. You can hear water sloshing around in this hard lid. Casey alludes to this in his video as well, but even though my experience is with a roof nest condor, I think there are a lot of takeaways that will apply to other similar side folding clamshell style rooftop tents. The first tent drawback that really started to get to me after a while was the lack of stand up space. Even with a moderately sized ground tent, you might have enough uh, room to kind of bend over uh, and change your clothes. Uh, with most of the canopy campers, I'll use the Go Fast Camper and the uh, Super Pacific as examples. Um, you have the ability to move sections of the floor so that you can fully stand up in the bed of your truck. The next issue for me is access and storage. I really did think that the mid-hide rack would be the perfect compromise between storage space and keeping the center of gravity in the truck a little bit lower uh, given the weight of the tent. I feel like I'm a reasonably mobile and flexible guy. I hit my head on the underside of this rack so many times crawling into the back of the bed to try and access storage bins. Not to mention that there were just some things that I could no longer load in the bed of the truck, uh, larger items that I could if I had just had a canopy. As far as access goes, I didn't think this would happen, but I did get sick and tired of having to step up on the rear passenger tire to pop the cover off the tent or deploy or put the ladder back away. I don't think it was a matter of if I was gonna slip off the tire and eat shit at some point. I think it was a matter of when. Back to the storage space piece. Although I do like this Retrax One locking tonneau cover, the roll-up canister takes up some space in the bed. If I had a canopy, I would get that space back, yet still be able to lock things up and secure them when I'm on the road. I did develop some longevity concerns with our tent, although that's probably a separate conversation. I will say that with these tents in general, you give up a lot of real estate that you could otherwise use for storage or lights or antennas or solar components. Also, try problem solving how you mount an awning on a mid-height rack that you won't constantly be running your head into. With the uh, canopy campers I referenced earlier, the Super Pacific and the GFC, you get a hard plascore roof that's surrounded by essentially a halo of extruded aluminum that gives you a ton of mounting options for all the stuff I just referenced. I do realize there are some clamshell rooftop tents in the market with aluminum shells that have T-Track mounting slots, but I think in order to maximize longevity on these tents, you can't leave them on your truck year-round. So if you follow our channel at all and you've caught any of our previous Chevy Colorado build videos, you may have already realized that our rooftop tent is gone. I sold it on Facebook Marketplace about a month ago. Uh, this blue sea panel is not the only thing I'm working on today. I'm trying to slowly dismantle this up top overland mid-height rack. We're going to sell it and the tonneau cover because in about a month and a half, we're headed to Belgrade, Montana to pick up our own Go Fast Camper. And yes, we skipped over the price difference conversation in this video. I will say that it's cheaper to buy a canopy camper first, especially since prices are creeping up, than to buy a rack and a tent and slowly realize that's not the best piece of equipment for you and what you like to do with your vehicle. If you are looking at either one of these setups for your truck, hopefully there was some information in this video that's useful. That's all the time we've got for today. As always, thanks for tuning in to Trash Panda Garage. Until the next time, get out there, build something.